Oh, I suppose it was only a matter of time. Tell Chanlo I will be with him shortly. Are we here to speak ill of my brother? I will gladly go first. Complaint one of 294. Snorpington has always had his imagination and his moral compass. But no, I suppose he's gotten markedly more distraught since our project's dissolution. Oh, I'm aware. I have a pile of threatening letters to that effect. However, I will gladly take this opportunity to set the record straight. We were working together on a government-funded research project. Advanced prosthetics that are ten times stronger than an ordinary grumpus. But our dear Snorpington discovered that the government had less than savory plans for that technology. And despite my protestations, he tried to make those plans public knowledge. Am I the world's only optimist? That technology would have saved lives. If it must either exist with some consequences or not exist at all, I think the choice is clear. Yeah, <laughs> Where did you come from? Shoo! <sighs> Unfortunately, Snorpington agreed with you. He tried to play whistleblower, but before he could make a sound, we were both fired. And after that, there was a campaign to slander both of us, to discredit any allegations he might still make. <laughs> if you must call it that but only the most boring sort with paperwork and lawsuits. Don't mistake justification for reason. Snorpington has moved well beyond the realities of our situation. Mm, happy to have enlightened you. Honestly, I expected this conversation to involve more shouting and headlocks. Perhaps. But for now, my work beckons. When you're finished with your amusements, come see me. We have work to do. Snacksburg's inhabited again. A surprising discovery. You. You are the ignoble journalist. Despite your lack of any and all useful skills, I require your assistance. As is extracting feces from the latrine. What a meritless question. Ah, obedience is a fine substitute for competence. Now, my experiments were halted with the unfortunate disappearance of Egabel. Since the settlement's dissolution, finding new subjects has been vexing. A bit of gastronomic biochemistry. Never mind the details. The local physician. Lisbeth's companion. Very likely deceased. Somebody who asks questions rather than answering them. Silence yourself and listen. You've likely witnessed grumpus limbs transforming into bug snacks. I call this process snackification. Under normal circumstances, this occurs at random. However, I have developed a method to direct the effect to specific limbs. It's simple once you understand the internal mechanisms behind the molecular dissemination of snack particles. <sighs> This is the Snacktivator. Feed me Strabby. Poke Snacktivator in foot. Foot turns into Strabby. Understand? Very good. I will allow you to field test the Snacktivator for the time being. I, meanwhile, have some very interesting plans for my leg. I look forward to working with you further. If what Shelda has to say is so monumentally important, then why does she waste time making her speech so farcically obtuse? Employing sesquipedalian jargon is rudimentary. The hard part is make brain no big think. In light of the shrinking spice's more volatile nature, I've developed a new theory on the creation of the crater. Perhaps the ancient crumpuses, in a bout of supreme incompetence, mixed the wrong chemicals, exploded, and died. I suppose I have let my personal feelings inhibit my judgment when it comes to Shella and her potential for collaboration. Rest assured, to prevent repeating such a mistake, I will endeavor never to feel feelings again. I have learned much. Despite your general ignorance, you have been of use to me. Good job. No matter how many bug snacks I become, my body feels no different. Is there a threshold of grumpusness? When every cell of my body is bug snacks, will I remain floofy fizzle bean, or will I simply be bug snacks right down to the taste? I must find out. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. The answers won't come to me without further testing. However, I have exhausted my research here. I will experiment on Snacksburg. <laughs> I look forward to working with you further. I cannot believe that. Shelda was right. That thought reverberates throughout my skull on a loop. I was too petty to see it, and now she's paid the price for my hubris. For all our enmity, she was never afraid to challenge my preconceived notions. And above all else, she believed in shedding her knowledge. After all, nothing known is useful if it is known alone. If I am to learn one lesson from Shelda, let that be it. Snorpington is dead. 
It is a simple yet unfathomable fact. It is tempting now to unhinge myself from the concept of self-preservation and pursue a pyrrhic victory over the parasites that shatter our fragile world. But if I allow myself this one small sentiment, I should instead take on some fraction of my brother's caution and conscience. After all, somebody needs to look after Chen Lu. Ah! Always a question worth asking. This shrinking spice intrigues me. What substance could produce such a pronounced effect on bug snacks? Preparations for my grand experiment are nearly complete. Soon we will see if we can amend my ambulation. From what I observe, it was manufactured by ancient grumpuses, so surely it'll be simple to recreate. But for now, simply transform my arm into a red banapa. Oh, please. Bring an ancient grumpus to the present and they'd be utterly lost. Anything they can do, I can do fundamentally better. <laughs> Shelda, know anything useful? <laughs> you can be quite funny on occasion. Frivolities aside, I require a sample of shrink spice for study. Bring a specimen here and place it into my trough. <sighs> I would like to see this shrink spice for myself. Bring a sample to my lab. Place it into this trough. <laughs> It seems this substance becomes quite volatile when removed from its origin. A flaw in its design, perhaps. How troublesome. I may need to employ a more direct method of study. By which I mean, bring another sample here and throw it at me before it combusts. I am wearing goggles, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm told physical violence can be quite cathartic. Since the spice causes no apparent harm to bug snacks, I am reasonably certain that I will be fine. <sighs> Retrieve another sample of shrink spice and throw it directly at me before it combusts. Ah, the goggles! They do nothing! <sighs> <coughs> if you couldn't tell, <laughs> that was rather unpleasant. <coughs> <clears throat> However, having experienced that, I have learned two very important facts. One, the substance does not work on grumpuses. Two, I should not do that again. I am no closer to obtaining a usable sample of shrink spice. However, I believe we may learn something from the local bug snacks. Excellent. That is one more thing I must do. Hand me the snack tomato. Use the shrink spice to capture one chedob and one milimochi. Then transform me with those specimens. The old snack activator was worthless scrap. I have updated it. Ah, decently competent work. It is now capable of altering snack matter through a process of sonic anamnesis. Unfortunately, any remnants of the spice seem to have been digested, but this too yields interesting results. <sighs> My body remembers what I eat. The snack activator can change snackified limbs into anything I've ever eaten. In their shrunken state, the bug snacks here are not fundamentally different from those on snack tooth proper. Use it. Change my arm from Bonapa to Strabby. Are you amazed? You've seen nothing yet. I am still forming my hypotheses, but I presume the process is endemic to this island and the spice was created to inhibit it. If my hypothesis is correct, the bug snacks can remember the shape of my body. It is time to test that hypothesis. Use the snack activator on my missing leg. None beyond the usual. <laughs> After all, Chandler ate a bonga royale as soon as we arrived. And he seems alive and well. It will be simple. I am merely exhausting every avenue of study. It's called being thorough. Look it up. Now, I've observed chocolates capable of maintaining a small size. This may present a more stable vessel for the spice. Aha! My leg is back. Regrettably, I must not eat it, delicious though it may be. So bring one to my science trough, please. Bug snacks can cure the sick, revitalize the frail. This discovery will reshape the world. To think Elizabeth and Agabel walked away from that. Pathetic. Please capture a chocolate and place it within my science trough. <clears throat> but I refuse to dwell on personal matters while there is yet more work to do. Use the snack activator again. Transform my limbs into cocomites. <laughs> At last, a viable sample. Now I can extract the powder and finally put this mystery to rest. This requires my utmost concentration, and you ask far too many questions. You may return when I found my answer. Hmm. My body has changed into more cocomites than I've eaten. Blast it all! I do not need your distractions. Can you even comprehend what has happened? I've obtained dried particles of plant slurry. 
but I have no way to analyze them. It's like living in the Stone Age out here. This means that all bug snacks are one and the same. Each one could change into any other with the right stimulus. And now that is true of me. Perhaps if I had a particle separator, an electron microscope, and a degree in botany... Mm, bah. Plants are not my area of expertise. Now, use the Snacktivator to its full potential. I want limbs of Noodler, Cocomite, Bonabra, and Strabby all at once. You cannot be serious. I would sooner eat my bow tie than listen to a word of Shelda's advice. Afraid? I simply do not want to waste my valuable time being lectured on archaic moral dichotomies. Mombus is actually quite accomplished in plant cultivation. However, he has vowed never to speak to me again after the Noodler incident. That was clearly a statement of hyperbole. I very much like this bow tie, and I will not eat it even if doing so wins an argument. Yes, I admit that I am frustrated. Under normal circumstances, I could do this without assistance. Ha! <laughs> if Sheldon knows the secret of the shrink spice, I will eat my bow tie. <sighs> very well. Since you clearly won't stop pestering me about this... Let us go see Shelda. Cease your hostilities, Shelda. I am here on business. I've been informed that you may possess a rudimentary understanding of phytochemical reactions, which I am in need of. I do not appreciate your sarcasm. If you do not wish to help me, then simply say so and be gone with you. Very well. Then I require an analysis of the shrink spice. Tell me what is in it and be quick about it. Please. Waft. Don't sniff. Oil of vitriol? That's sulfuric acid, a common but powerful desiccant. That certainly explains the burning sensation. Well, this has been surprisingly not a waste of time. I am going to leave now. I may call on your services again. Stay still, you pugnacious pests! Gah, why did Snorbington make this so cumbersome? I'm a scientist, not an exterminator. You do it if you're so inclined. Fat enough! Ah, but here comes someone with a healthy capacity for violence. Take this device and clear a path for us, please. Excellent violence. Ah, fascinating. You're good for something after all. Oh, more specimens arriving. Have caution. We're not finished yet. There's no time for cowardice. Assist us. I cannot let this opportunity pass. I can feel it. The precipice. Ian Bugsnack's potential to understand the very nature of being. I would be a fool not to indulge. That was regrettable. That's enough mortal danger for one day. Let's abscond while the bug snacks have subsided. Ah, you're here. I have need of your assistance again. Since my last discovery, I've been testing the limits of bug snack regeneration. Unfortunately, I've done all I can with this one leg. I want to try something rather more advanced. Put simply, I'm going to remove my head. Pardon me, I forgot your limitations. Remove as in cut off. Head, as in the thinky part. <laughs> well, it would be more accurate to say that I'm going to remove my body. And I am reasonably certain that bug snacks will regrow it in its entirety. Indeed. Perhaps I could do something more measured if I had a full team funding and a great deal more subjects. But as usual, nobody's volunteering. Oh, mighty well. You're welcome to try. Speak to the other grumpuses. See if you can find a volunteer among them, as expected. My name alone is enough to frighten them off. Hardly. It's not me they're truly afraid of. They give in to cowardice and ignorance because they cannot fathom the tremendous good that my research can do. Since I have failed time and again to change their minds, the burden rests on me to complete the work. Perhaps then they will understand its value. As for you, I require enough bug snacks to fully transform my body. Only the sweetest and most filling will be acceptable. Consider it a personal request. This could be my last meal after all. <laughs> fully transform my body. I daily with sweet bug snacks. That is all. Very good. You're actually being useful. I have a few more preparations to make. The experiment will begin in 24 hours. I borrowed one of my brother's patent and grumpinati traps and made some modifications. Once the device is activated, snacks will flow into my open mouth, thus triggering my regeneration. I don't. That's what the experiment is for. Yes, I surmise that is why I am inside the device and you are not. I need you to load the funnel at the back and then we can begin. Snobbington, here to sabotage my career again? Nonsense. If my hypothesis is correct, I will be perfectly fine and I will have advanced medical knowledge by a century. Don't try to infect me with your cowardice.
What you should care about is my work. That is what is truly important. I would think you at least would understand. Instead, you insist on being a selfish, spineless, slack-jawed baby. It's pitiful, isn't it? <sighs> I can rearrange fibrous tissue with electrostatic waves, but I cannot convince my own brother to help me. My work should stand for itself. I shouldn't need to put so much effort into explaining myself. But it does take effort. With the others, it is simple. I can write them off as ignorant, frightened children. <sighs> but not Snoopy. I know he's not a coward or a fool, which means that the error is mine. I cannot make myself understood. So I lose patience. And I give up on understanding. And perhaps that is cowardice on my part. Snoppington, I'm not participating in your delusions, brother. You waste your talented mind playing spy games when you could be assisting my research. Oh, please. Don't try to dress up your cowardice. You still haven't told the green meathead how you feel. I thought so. Leave me to my business and I'll leave you to yours. I am not here to spew gossip for that obnoxious rag you call a newspaper. Very well. If you insist... I will educate you. I am Flufty Fizzlebean, the world's first gastroentomologist. In baby language, I study bug snacks and their effect on grumpuses. To study bug snacks, obviously. <sighs> when Elizabeth Megafig was recruiting for her cult of personality, I observed something strange about her arm. She was keeping it hidden, but she displayed early stages of snackification. That piqued my interest. You are asking for opinions instead of facts. I'm not going to discuss my feelings with you, you emotional parasite. Every time I try to publish my groundbreaking research, you journalists instead churn out slander about my dangerous methods or my questionable behavior. Stop editorializing and focus on the science. I simply wanted to continue my work, Egabel or no, but Shelder blamed me for the disappearances. I'm no stranger to witch hunts. I vacated before the pitchforks could come out. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. I've only eaten one grumpus. Would you prefer I keep my severed leg in the outhouse? The truth. <laughs> Elizabeth was an arrogant coward, unlike Egabel. Egabel truly understood my research. She was hungry to participate in it. Our work together was fruitful, even pleasant, until somebody interfered. Shelda, that mummified fraud, stoked Elizabeth's fear of my work, weaponizing her relationship to Egabel, scrambling her fragile emotions, and fabricating a binary choice between myself and Elizabeth. Ultimately, Egabel chose sentiment over science. <sighs> and I surmise that was the death of her. Yes, I have the password to Egabel's personal storage box. It may be of interest to you. You've wasted enough of my time now. Leave. Hmm. So an unknown piece of geography has erupted from the ocean, unexplained and unstable, likely to sink again at any moment. So of course I'm going. I will gather my equipment. As enticing as that mystery is, I have yet to unlock the full potential of snackification. When my experiments are complete, I will eagerly revisit this lesser island. <laughs> Of course, Snorpington can get volunteers. Ah, oh, but it seems a vagrant has wandered into our expedition. Snacksburg is that way, Shelda. I will respect you as soon as you do something respectable. Which one? Yes, somebody needs to carry this septuagenarian. Yes, yes, you can both be struck by a meteor at any moment. Honestly, they do this every time Chanlo goes to check the mail. Can we stop wasting time and get on with this expedition before I'm as old as Shelda? Finally. As usual, it is up to me to do a majority of the heavy thinking around here. Let us not be distracted by interpersonal dramatics when a cacophony of scientific curiosities has been dropped in our laps. Oh, how unfortunate. I suppose we will have to proceed without Snorpington's so-called supervision. Hmm. These coral structures are the only animal species I've witnessed anywhere near the Snacktooth biosphere. Intriguing. Well, whoever built it put it directly in our way. Chandler, you excel in brute force. Destroy this. Call me Floof Dog again and see what happens. Yes, yes, how impressive. Some very dead grumpuses figured out how to move rocks up and down. Please solve this so that we can find something interesting. I owe you an apology, brother. My earlier insults were unnecessary. Your inventions are quite valuable in capturing research samples, and I appreciate that about you. Excellent. Now that we are reconciled, I have a dozen research papers that could use peer review. As you seem to have free time right now, let us begin. You're interrupting personal business. Unless you have something intelligent to say, be gone. Rhythmic gyration has no purpose. Change my mind.
Trifony has convinced me of the historic and cultural value of expressive movement. Perhaps I should experiment. Fascinating. Hiding purpose and frivolous waste. I will make use of this principle. Aha! Uh -huh. That would align with my theory on the correlation between age and size. Tell me, Chenlo. How did you come to capture this specimen? Ah, uh, but why would Mother Nature, noted despiser of bug snacks, be dispensing bug snack catching equipment? Hmm? Shelda, your god is a hypocrite. I am fascinated by this shrink spice and its effects on snack matter. If I can determine exactly what it's made of, I'm certain we will have much use for it. That's not what a hypothesis is. Honestly, what does my brother see in you? You took your precious time getting here. Any longer and my leg might have rotted away. Come, let's finish our work. My experiment cost an arm and a leg, and nobody else was offering. <laughs> Absolutely not. I'm on the verge of a breakthrough. Now assist me or be gone with you. Ha, ha, take that. <laughs> Yum, yum, yum. Science. Interesting. I have to double check my notes. That's an odd color. Science! Huzzah! I'm having fun! Yeah! Woo! Ow! 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 Snacks, and if I combine, hmm, well, if I combine these two, then what? Hmm, I'm not quite sure. Oh, what if I took this and then I? Hmm, no, that's not right. <laughs> oh, neat, unbelievable, intriguing. Of course, the thing. You place your buggy ball on the ground in front of us. Good. Now turn around, and no peeking. We wouldn't want to ruin the surprise, would we? Slippery little thing. Keep it still or the needle will... You'll live. There we go. And... <sighs> you may now turn around. I wanted to call it the engorged strabiform or bacula encasement, but we can't always get what we want. Problem solved. You are all very welcome. Hmm. I have no idea. I suppose we'll have to catch it later. This collapsed chasm... I suspect it was once quite deep. If only Snorpington had joined us, he could have given us a subterranean analysis. What a shame. Indeed. Yet large enough to launch something of significant size. In fact, it seems to be perfectly suited for the big buggy ball. I believe an experiment is in order. Command the big buggy ball to enter this ancient lunch pad so that we can see what occurs. Hmm... There seems to be a triggering mechanism on the back. It may require a jolt from the snack grappler to activate. The disturbance is emanating from the sealed pit! Agreed. But now that the danger is past, I'd like to revisit what precisely all of this means. Ha! <laughs> if the cheddar bottle could be handled by one mediocre journalist, I doubt it could destroy an entire civilization. Amusing as this grisly history is... None of that explains why the island suddenly rose from the sea. What a shame. I was having fun. I am skeptical of the idea that Krumpus' sacrifice is the true catalyst for snack gigantification. However, this is infeasible and, yes, unethical to test at the moment. Regrettably, I must leave with more questions than answers. However, rest assured that I am by no means finished researching this island. Oh, please. You were likely in tears the entire time. If you inform me of the recipe, I could find a way to augment the effects. Consider this an effort to be less deliberately antagonistic towards you. Ah, 
Shoulder, you seem to be dangerously close to my personal space. If you're here to trap me in a spell circle again, I will inform you that I could leave at any time and I was merely acting. Oh, and you've come to me. Why don't you ask your mother naturally? Or Crystal or whatever you talk to. How interesting. Are you certain? I'm given to understand that I exude a fetid odor of utter evil from every pore. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have little time nor patience for your games. If you want to know something, stop speaking like a horoscope and ask. I'm not about to resolve your philosophical quandaries. There is no answer to the why of the universe. Bug snacks simply exist. However, since you've finally taken an interest in my studies, then just this once I will educate you. I can show you how to extract live snack matter for microscopic viewing without that matter denaturing. Ah, but if I were to explain it to a very small infant, denaturing is... You do? Aha, uh -huh. very well then, our lesson should proceed smoothly. Step one of seventeen, preparing an adequate formalin solution. Indeed. I must say I'm eager to see what grisly curiosities you found in your studies, Professor. Hmm. But first, let us discuss my findings. With some <clears throat> minor assistance, I was able to reproduce the newly discovered shrink spice. After some experimenting, I've learned that these big bug snacks are actually small by default. Something about the snack matter on this island causes them to enlarge. I believe I understand the how, but I've yet to discover the why. Using my words against me. Invent your own wisdom, you sagacious charlatan. <laughs> Shocking, I know. The things I do for science. I believe we may have a solution for that. My combined research with Shelder has produced something quite useful indeed. Don't ruin the surprise. Trust me, it will be very entertaining. Please do. I'm quite curious to see the result. Will Befica turn into Philbo or the bug snacks he's eaten? Hold on a moment while I retrieve my notes. Agabel, what a pleasant surprise. Welcome back, Dr. Batanugget. Quiet, you! Doctor, you are only subjecting yourself to needless risk. Elizabeth is likely deceased. Simple. We find a way to get off the ground if the need arises. This is a serious setback. However, unlike the rest of these ignoramuses, I will maintain emotional distance. I will continue my work no matter how great the risk. While I don't necessarily agree with you, I'll admit that there's more to learn about bug snacks than I anticipated. Thank you. I'm trying very hard. If my eyes do not deceive me, I believe I've spotted new varieties of bug snacks as well. There's an easy way to find out. Five minutes in and you already need a nap. Leave the labor to the productive members of society, then. Excellent. Why don't you go and fetch it for us, Chen Lo? As expected. That is all. That is all. Good riddance. Good riddance. Where was I? Where was I? Farewell. Back to work. Don't do anything I wouldn't. Try not to do anything too stupid. Now that that's over. That is all. Shoo. Away with you. Commencing experiment. You again. You again. What? What? Salutations. Salutations. Oh, hello. Greetings. Well met. Hello. Hmm. Neurochemical flood. How amusing. How do they mix? Mm. If you see Trifony, ask her what the osteoblast said to the osteocyte. It's hilarious. I have a hypothesis that the substance leaking out of the volcano is not lava, but rather a superheated fondue. Unfortunately, my studies had to be put on hold when my sampling equipment melted. I'll make a note of that. Intriguing. Results. Negative. Unstable snack matter. While I regret that all my research was destroyed, I have come away with a revelation. I cannot improve Grumpus Kind if I refuse to understand it. It may be a long and frankly annoying endeavor, but it is one worth pursuing. I'm sorry to say, Professor Lotterblog, but you and this charming specimen are not related. May I keep it? I could use a few more skeletons in my closet. <laughs>